<laughs> All right, let's do this. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Jorge's World. And this is a new thing that I'm going to be trying. This is an interview. People in the industry, actors, writers, costumers, um, cinematographers, photographers. Uh, this is a cool thing. And if you see this handsome man next to me, this is Danny Garcia. Say hello. Hi. YouTube world. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask Danny some questions while he drives around and I'm going to make sure, well, you can pretty much tell if he's keeping his eye on the road and if we die, it's probably his fault or the fact that I asked some hard hitting questions. <laughs> and Danny Garcia and I met how long ago? God, I want to say two and a half, three years now. Was it 2015? I think so. Do you remember that fateful day? I do. I think we met, um, well, we met on the bus on the way to the set of HBO's False. Divorce. No? We did not. Where did we meet? We met in Brooklyn at the first reading of the season of that Divorce. That is correct. Santa Maria. We were the only Latino boys. We were the only Latino <laughs> boys at the end of the table. Yeah. You remember that? I forgot about that. And we were joking about how we weren't famous. Yeah. And we were saying how much THC and SJP were so famous, and we were kind of just there on the wings. Of and the, then, but we were surprised that they even invited us. Yeah, well, that was the first because it was our first reading. Yeah, it was yeah, my yeah. first reading yes. I ever had, mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of hit it off pretty, pretty. I guess because we were just like we were the two newbies. We were pretty much like, what are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> How did like, we get here? Like, yeah, because it was our first big gig. Yeah. We were the recurring yeah. dudes. Yeah, yeah. And we uh, don't run into that guy. No. Nope. Nope. Um, but we were the two new guys. It was our first reading. We had never been to one of these things. And we were also, like I said, set at the end of the table, uh, pretty much the children's section. Mm -hmm. We hit it off. We were the only idiots laughing at six in the morning. We were. Because we never well, knew that we were going to work again. Right. <laughs> well, I remember the, one of the first things you told me was that you had booked this uh, movie that I also auditioned for. The, Which one? Uh, the one with um, I've done it Susan too. Sarandon. <laughs> Where you're playing the mover? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, that's Glenn Close. Oh, like Glenn I said, Close. I've done a few. <laughs> and that film is called Wild Wedding. Yes. You yes. might catch me in that. You might not, actually, because it was just a one-line thing where I'm moving in a couch, and you probably, if you heard the line, you might have thought it was one of the other movers. Uh, how many have you been cut from? So far, just one. But the thing is, what made it so harsh it was that it was my first one. I invited everyone that I knew over yeah. to my place. Yeah. Me and my wife, we invited them over so that we can see, mm -hmm. you know, we can rejoice in my successes. Yeah. Whatever. But I found out that the episode actually came out earlier in the day on demand. So I was excited. So I went to watch it so I can see my scene so I can let everybody know when it's coming up yeah. later in the evening. So I start watching it. I'm forwarding. I'm fast forwarding. I'm like, oh, here it is. Here it is. And there I went. I gave him a whole day of my life. Because that, that's what happened with uh, Succession. I just did Succession. Yeah. I remember the scene was maybe about 20, 30 seconds longer than mm -hmm. when it was. Mm -hmm. And I saw it, and they cut like a huge chunk of the scene. And I was thinking to myself, oh, man. I told Close. everyone to watch this. <laughs> so what, what got you into acting? Like, what was that moment that said, you know what, I want to be an actor? You know, it was a very, very long time ago when I was about 11. Really? Yeah. I was a huge fan of the show, um, The Wonder Years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you're about my age, so you can remember that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and, and, see that guy in that truck? No. He had no shirt on, and he was like 10 times my size. <laughs> That's how you sell ice cream. That's how you <laughs> kidnap kids. <laughs> I saw the show, Wonder Years, yeah. and I was like... Oh my god, that's awesome. Like this kid's like my age and he's like the lead of a show. Yeah. Also watching TV bloopers and practical jokes when oh, I was okay. younger because it, it made me realize that that, that whole thing was make believe. Which, yeah. you know, when you're a kid you don't know that. Yeah. But then when I saw like the behind the scenes or like the bloopers, which are my favorite thing, yeah. I was like, Wow, this is like a make believe world and they get to play and make believe, which I really like to play make believe when I was a kid. I so, did too, yeah. Yeah. So uh Are you an only child? No, but I'm I'm a lot younger than my siblings. Okay, so they didn't like playing with you. Right. So I had to, you know, play my own imaginary friends. So I did stand up for about three years. I did like open mics all over the city. Really? Yeah. And then uh, I did that for a while. It was cool. I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. I met some really cool people. But then I realized, ah, uh, this is a lot of energy I'm expending. Yeah. And I don't really want to be a stand-up comic. I want to be an actor. A couple of years pass, and then I. Uh, I did it. I took an improv class at Magnet Theater. Okay. 
um, where I met Mark Grenier, who was also doing an apprenticeship at Barrow Group. Yeah. And I think he was doing, like, aside from Magnet Theater, he was doing, like, an acting slash improv class. Yeah. And I thought that would be a cool way to me, for me to transition into yeah. an acting class because I, you know, I knew him and I felt comfortable. I did that. And then, uh, and then from there, I just ended up going to more acting class, different people acting classes cool. with different teachers. And that's it. And then I kind of snowballed from there. I started auditioning. Mm -hmm. And then I met you and now I'm here. You've been working pretty consistently, though. I've been pretty lucky. I've been acting for about six years, and I've gotten like I've got like you know, I've got a few credits on my IMDb. Be because between you, me, and Renes, which is the third amigo in this group of goons <laughs> from divorce, um, we've we've pretty we've been pretty fortunate. Okay. okay, do people think you're rich? Yes, especially my uh, my uh, twelve year old nephews. Oh, they think you're rich. Yeah, they think that you know because you're on TV. Uh huh. They're like, what's the most expensive thing you own? Because he, he they're told him to rob you. Yeah, because like, he told him that I'm on TV, and I was like, "Dude, my phone! Like, really? I'm not balling." The most that. expensive thing I own is probably like my bedroom furniture. <laughs> but there isn't a lot of money, and a lot of people yeah. think that there's a lot of money. No, nah, well, when you've been I on mean, TV. No, if as you're much working, as you have. yeah, if you're working consistently, maybe sure, yeah. I can, you know. Sorry, I, I think we're gonna have to cut because we're actually yeah. stopping at a friend's house. To be continued. See, a truck like that ran into a car that was double parked, dude. But I love how it's it. just open. That's See, that scares me. I feel like something's Well, yeah, like out. one of those trucks, like the, yeah. the little foot trucks and yeah. stuff like that. What are your future plans for acting? Like, how long do you want to do this for? Do you see yourself doing this forever? Do you see yourself doing this for, like, another couple of years and then, you know, mm -hmm. giving it up and starting a farm somewhere? <laughs> what do you, what do like, you plan on, on doing? I cannot see myself doing anything else. So, okay. um... I, that's it. I got bitten by the bug, and it's a wrap. Like, I, I, I literally cannot imagine doing anything else. Really? I mean, if we're fortunate enough to work consistently, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. But with that being said, it's, you know, it's it's a gamble in this business. Yeah. Um, but would you still, like, I mean, you wouldn't just say, hey, like, I don't need to do this, you know, for money anymore because you do love acting. This is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Would you, like, give up? Um, the professional gig like waiting on how the business dictates right. your future or would you start like a theater company or, or create well, your own film what, a, what would yeah. you do well I kind of feel like I'm doing that now you know because again like you just said you can't wait around for the business so I am creating my own content as a matter of fact the reason we dropped off that lens to Chewy was because I was shooting a short yeah. a few weekends ago and I borrowed a lens from him and you started doing a few shorts I've done a few shorts um, this is the second one that I'm kind of at the helm of um, I'm, I wrote, co-wrote it with my friend, and I'm producing it and directing it and shooting it. This is the same one from the bad news. This is different from some bad news. Some bad news was funny. You got to watch it. Some bad news, and that was great. I, I was me, Yul Vasquez, my friend Alan Alfaro directed yeah. that. We, we wrote it together. Um, Yul Vasquez is just like we were talking about before we got cut off. He's a legend in he this is. business. Like you, he's he's basically like anywhere you go, almost <laughs> everywhere I've gone at least. Yeah, yeah, I mention his name and the world stops. And <laughs> he's great, and, and he's he, good for good advice. Absolutely, great advice. And yeah, and we met him on the set of Divorce, and yeah. uh, he was you know he was kind enough to lend me his time and shoot this short with me, um, which was hilarious. Thank you. Are you wanting to do just sketch comedy? No, not necessarily. But I just think that that's my kind of personality yeah so if I'm writing something more than likely it'll be comedy or okay. there'll be co comedic elements in it because I have another thing that I want to write that's a little darker but it's still gonna have a comedic edge to it even though it's kind of like grim what is your dream project if we're talking about this stuff now like you mm. said if this is the bug this is what you want to yeah. do what yeah. is your dream project is it directing a big movie is it trying to create your own tv series is it yeah. just doing a whole bunch of funny shorts or what is you know your that's dream a, that's a great question and i get asked that a lot but i don't have a specific answer because i think for me just working in general is good like yeah. if i'm on set one day shooting a tv show I'm like a pig in shit. I love. I, I feel like I, there's definitely a project that I've had in mind, if, if and when the time comes. Um, Comedy or? Um, it could be comedic, but it's basically a revolving around the story of my, my dad coming to New York, my, immigrating to New York from the Dominican Republic yeah. in the 70s. 
Not specifically that, but I think in that world, there is a story there that I feel like could be told. Yeah. It could be told in a different way. We've talked about this. I have a five-year plan. You know what I mean? Like, I love acting. Yeah. And I'm not in this business for fame. I'm right. not in this right. business right. To, to get likes on, on, on Instagram. Right. I'm in this business because I love acting. I love mm -hmm. storytelling. Mm -hmm. And um, I made the deal with my wife that I, all I needed was five years to try this business out. Yeah. New York is difficult for us. We're from Texas. Yeah. We like to drive around and we like country. We like space. You know, I, I, family is down in Texas and I can do theater back there um, in, in Texas. So, you know, like if something's happening in the next year or so and it's not picking up, we might move back to Texas. And the project I would like to do is I would like to write books. Okay. You know, because I think as an actor, I think storytelling is, you know, a way to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And I think what got me into acting was stories. The one thing that's, that's always like, you know what? I knew the devil. Yeah. <laughs> right. See, mijo, mira, there, the devil mm -hmm. was at the club Bocasios. And you he know? danced well. He, he danced well. well. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's the devil. He's the devil. Come he's on. like Chris Brown. He can dance. He's he like can Usher. Turn it up. You know, he turns it up. <laughs> Do you think we'll get back on divorce? Um, I know I, I changed the subject really quick. I there, would but love now to that see. I'm thinking about that. You think that they'll write us back in? I would love to see how that turnaround would happen. Would you be happy? I would love to go back. What I mean, they, I would love to work with Thomas Hayden Church again. He was so much fun to work with. He was the reason why we got more episodes. That that's true. Also, you know. There's, uh, I need you to in the scene with me. There's you know, uh, uh, in the last episode. There's a scene where you guys. It just makes sense that you guys are there. You know what? Let me tell uh, Sharon about it. <laughs> Sharon, um, or can we get Sebastian <laughs> and Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that guy's a man. He's the best. But man. He, like. <laughs> We not only came back for another two episodes. Came back for the second season. We got season. another two episodes the next season. <laughs> that's right. That's Ballers, true. man. That's true. Yeah, but you got to just take it all in stride and just like, cool, you know, yeah. and do the work and just. You and I both, we mm -hmm. had a year where we were just like bouncing project, project, yeah. project. Yeah. I think we were working at least once a month, every year. And so we thought that this year was going to be that. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, we did a pro, like we worked on something each in January, mm -hmm. I, I remember. Mm hmm and we thought, you know what? This is it, man. This yeah, is going to be up. awesome. Gonna Pilot be... season's going to rock. We're going in for series regular roles. Yeah. We're, boom, we're going to kill it this year. And then March, we're calling each other, and we're I'm there at your apartment, and, uh, and we're just depressed. It's <laughs> just like, dude, have you gone out? No. Me neither. But I, I kept uh, you know, I kept myself occupied with writing and, and actually putting together this short because yeah. this, this, this took a while to – because my, 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 my co-writer and uh, star in it yeah. is, is eight months pregnant. Oh, man. So it kept getting pushed back, and yeah. like, she's literally due like any day At now. Any day. And we still have some pickup shots we need to do. Ooh, I prepared. love directing. You though. do? I, I think if I were to do that again, I would have to be so prepared. Yeah. You seem like you're a little bit more organized than I am. Um, yeah, a little, a little. I'm not. I mean, the thing is that you can only control what you can control. You know. Yeah. I mean, but I do love not just being at the helm of things and, and like directing that way, but also just directing actors. Yeah. You know, I really like... Uh, well, you're an actor directing actors. I kind of respect that a lot. Yeah, thanks. Because you understand what, what as actor, as an actor, you know what we're dealing with. You know right. our language. The actor can be uh, interpreting it a different way. Yeah. And then you're just kind of just nudging them. Yeah. Maybe think of it like this. What if it's what if it's this that you're saying? Yeah. And then it brings something different out of them, you know? Have you ever been starstruck? I, I think I was a little, not, I wouldn't say starstruck, but I was nervous on the set of Power, but that's because that was my first thing. I was a little nervous because I remember the director giving me directions and I thought I was doing them, but I felt like from his energy, I was like, I'm not doing what he's asking me to do. <laughs> yeah. I think he's getting a little annoyed at me. But then after that, I literally just told myself, dude, you got to go in there and just do the work. You got to do the work, yeah. Yeah, forget about that. Like, I think you realize that they're normal people. Right, exactly. Right? Totally. I mean, I worked with Carol Kane on, on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. She's a legend. Yeah. When I did Going in Style, I was working, yeah. uh, I was there uh, for six days, mm -hmm. and my scenes were with Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine and yeah. Alan Arkin. Like, come Three on. Academy Award uh, winners, Come right? on, yeah. 
I didn't say hello or talk to them for like two days. I didn't say hello till like the third yeah. day on set because yeah, I was yeah. so, it was my first big movie. Yeah, yeah. And I was so nervous. How long did you did it take for you to start feeling comfortable on set? I'm starting to feel more comfortable now. Right? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like think, barely now, right? Yeah, I think I'm finally to the point where I'm like, all right, I, I know how this goes. I know the the process. I know I have to go here and go there and wait and talk to this person. I'm cool. Yeah. Like, I'm at a point now where I, I'll speak up and make suggestions or ask questions or yeah. this and that. I think the last three projects I did, I started feeling a little bit more comfortable. I knew yeah. my role on set. Right. Right. Aside from my character, you know what I right, mean? Totally. I, I, it it, it takes important. a while, you know, and you have to be comfortable on set. That's when you deliver your best performances. Right. A moment where I realized that I wasn't nervous and it surprised me was um, I was shooting uh, Chicago PD and we were rehearsing the the, uh, the scene and the director just wanted us to run it through and it's just me and um, I forget her name, but we were just doing the scene. But I didn't realize that the whole crew was watching us. I wasn't even thinking about that yeah like I just literally wanted to work the scene out with her and like figure it out and do what we needed to do and, it, and we did and the director was there Mark, Tin, Mark, Mark Tinker and he's awesome and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have anything coming up in the works I am in this next season of Mr. Mercedes which comes Sweet. out yeah which comes out in August have you read the books yet I haven't I'm not a big well I'm not a big reader I do want to read more but I'm also the can thing you is, read a little just lines, yeah, people though. read your lines to you. I'm not really big into horror, uh, so it's that, not really horror though. No, no, no. I know, but but it's I a mean, detective story. I know, but Stephen King. I mean, that's what you think. So you I, associate him. Uh, yeah, with horror. And yeah, I would I not it. like on my own go pick up a Stephen King book. You know what I mean? That's not really my my thing. But the show is great. I saw the first season when I booked. It's it. awesome. Yeah, I was like, this is amazing. I'm so happy I'm on the show. Yeah, like great. Brendan Gleeson's amazing. He was such. It was an honor to work with him, man. I noticed that. When they were shooting on him, his coverage, they were doing the wides. He wasn't really giving much. They got to his close-ups, and that's when he turned it on. And he's I like was Kevin like, Costner. Oh, you know, you don't give it your all in the the wide shot. No, man. It's when they come up to the close-up yep. is when you you give it your all. That's your performance. Because that's what the editor's going to use. And, yeah. You know, why not use your close-up? Because you know, like sometimes when you have an audition, yeah, and it says get stabbed, yeah, or you uh, uh -huh. sh get shot, yeah, yeah or yeah. you have to choke somebody, right? Like, how do you do that? Do you kind of just like play around with it on the yeah. wall? Yeah. Because you know, I you hear all these different kind of acting techniques, mm -hmm. and like, you know what? They can't see you from like here yeah. and, and down. But that, like, you're choking somebody. That's true. But basically, that's that's right though. Like, what I would do is I would. I would play it off like right where the frame cutoffs. Yeah. So if I were to choke someone, I'm not going to choke them up here, right? Because no. you can see that, but I'll choke them down here. It's usually not how I choke people. Right. That's true. But on camera, it might look different. Do you ever make the sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> you should. I don't do that. That gets you parts. That is. No, that's, that's why true. I didn't get that. Yeah. It was a commercial audition. So that's, that's why, why you didn't, didn't get it. You got to go. <laughs> I was getting punched by a booger. It was for a Musinex, Musinex commercial. I had an audition where I had to, I was getting chased by a big uh, mint. <laughs> and that, my friend actually booked that. Oh, that's great. He actually got, no, he got the mint. It was mint to be. I love it. <laughs> I see what you did there. You I, I did like it. it. My people he called rapists and murderers, remember? I'm yeah, Mexican. and Jeff Session called uh, my people lazy and just weed smokers. So, Man. no, we don't, do, we don't, we don't uh, contribute to society. Dominicans. Anyway, on we that note, barber shops. That's true. Tons of them and salons. Well, this is gonna go ahead, and uh, we're gonna conclude this interview. Um, thank you very much. This is always fun. Thank this, you, man. I love you know, talking to chatting, you and talking about the around. business. Yeah. Now, when we get unplugged, we could talk about the real stuff, the secrets to success. We can't share that. No. That's just for us. It's just for us. <laughs> if you want the car, you want the girls. <laughs> You want the gold chains. You're on the wrong advice. channel. This you're, is the wrong channel. You're on the wrong channel. But if you want some mediocre actors who, <laughs> who consistently work on good projects, watch this. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and link up Danny's um, social media stuff. Yeah, and um, my film. Some so bad news. hit him up on the DMs and ask him all the questions you want there. If you want to do that to me too, I don't know if I'll respond. I might. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And uh, 
Stay cool. Peace. Stay cool. Is that cool to say? Stay cool. Yeah, yeah. The young kids are saying. Do I? I did a thumbs up. Yeah. I think this ending is going way too long. All right. Bye.